Hello, people of the inner tubes. This is Dennis from the Grounded Reason podcast. Today, Joel and I are going to get into internet access in the United States, why it's expensive, why it's so hard to come by, and how come there isn't any competition in this country. We'll also talk about what country has the best and most accessible internet, and we'll get into a little bit of what we can do to maybe remedy some of the issues that we have in the United States when it comes to gaining affordable access to the internet. Um, one thing I am doing, though, is I'm compiling a list of affordable internet-only providers in the United States, um, and it's out on the blog, groundedreason.com. Um, it's there on the right. You'll see it. It says uh, internet-only plans, and if you click on it, uh, you'll see some of the stuff I've compiled already, and if you have one or know of one in your area, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and I'll get it in the list. So without further ado, let's get this thing rolling. So, you know the bane of every cord cutter's existence, right? Cable. Well, besides cable, it's the fact that you have to buy internet from them. Yeah. (laughs) And Uh, today, that's kind of what we're going to talk about, is the state of the internet in the U.S. Uh, Because it's a a pretty sad state of affairs. Yeah, it's it's definitely a a strange market, right? Like, and a lot of it's the legacy of of technology that was laid 30 years ago and and just who the players were that milked that. Right. And, you know, the ones that grabbed it then, kind of still on top now. And I didn't realize how bad it was until I started looking. Well, I was like, I'm talking, we have some friends in England. I'm talking to them and what they, what they're paying, you know, for internet access and it's it's crazy cheap like they're getting like 50 mips and they might pay 20 25 bucks a month yeah, for it which is a, a, certainly a lot better deal than i'm getting right and even like like i found a really solid deal uh with verizon i think they're trying to kind of like mm-hmm. get a little bit of their turf back from uh you yeah. know the evil Verizon's overlord the, the best out of the big dogs around here right well there's really only two choices when it comes down to it for us really yeah yeah comcast and verizon um and i mean we're kind of going to get into that a little later but um you know i think they're they're the fact i'm getting 50 mips for 50 bucks which is the best deal i've ever you know yeah seen it's not bad no i I mean i I think uh, we locked in our rate a while back and i think it was 65 or something so it's we're getting raked over the coals. Right. I mean everybody is. And and we're in a we're in a good spot. Yeah. Because we have actual choice here. Yeah. I but, mean I could probably try and renegotiate. I just haven't done it. You know, cuz most people don't. But um and we'll get into that a little later cuz we're going to discuss, you know, how the US looks compared to some other countries. Uh, and then, you know, what are the major issues here uh with uh internet access and cost and, you know, bandwidth speed and accessibility and what, you know, are some things that maybe we could all do to start chipping away at this problem. Yeah, and and honestly, I think one of the the really interesting so I really enjoy this topic because like it has a lot of like implicit economics and I'm a total dork for that. A total wonk on it. Yeah, economics. It's, yeah, it's bad. Um but so I enjoy that and I also uh really like this space because th- there's a lot of potential, right? Like we we are pretty far behind uh, the industry leaders. Like I was reading, uh, I think it was in a Wired article that the U.S. is ranked uh, 26th or something in like uh, its uh, broadband exposure. Well, yeah, it depends. It depends what metric they're using because every every report you see you'll see like a different yeah. ranking but i mean generally it's shockingly behind shockingly low. especially since you know we're americans we like to you know throw the number one in the air and we certainly don't like throwing the number 26 in the we air. we definitely don't like throwing right, like and 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 it's it what i saw is um i looked at the um akamai's 
Akamai Technologies as a company. They're a, a content distribution distribution network. Yep. They're pretty much one of I think one of the biggest them around. As far as I know, I mean, but they do they do a yearly report, and this is from like the fourth quarter of 2015. And the U.S. ranked 43rd mm. in the population that has accessibility to four MIPS or more. Wow. And that's they eighty seven percent, but still that's pretty bad. Most countries rank in the nine, high nineties. It's kind of an anomaly yeah. to have us down at eighty seven percent because that's only four MIPS. Yeah, and I will say now I could hear the internet screaming at us right now, saying, "But wait a second, we're a lot bigger than most of these other countries." True. That are getting it, absolutely, yes. The United States is the better part of a continent, right? Like, and I mean that figuratively and literally. Sorry, Canada. Sorry. So- sorry, Canada? Yeah, you're, you're sorry, Canada. <laughs> so, but no, the, uh, where I was going is that we do have, like, a lot of space to cover. But our, our population, I think there's 150 million on the East Coast and about a hundred million on the West Coast. So the bulk of the three hundred and thirty million people that live in the United States are on both coasts. Right. So there's a fair amount of density. So it, it is. You, it it actually, really should make up for it. Well, while I mean, and I'm going to get into um, you know who ranked number one in a minute. And what's, what's surprising, what surprised me is we're actually kind of close to, to they call it um, urban center. Um, like, like most people live in the urban center here. Yeah. I mean, even though there is, you know, people who, cause the urban center spreads with sprawl, those, you get metro areas. Yeah. I mean, and if you look at the 95 corridor, you're, you can't drive, you know, 10 seconds without seeing something on 95 going down from New York yeah, to, to pretty to much DC, <laughs> New York until you hit the other side of dc is becoming a megalopolis it really is right like you do have some empty space on the way down to richmond right but a not a whole lot not at all and but but when um so when i'm looking at at, at akamai's report we ranked 43 there it gets a bit better when you go up to um you know 10 mips because we're ranked 16th there half the country yeah. about 53 percent can get 10 mips yeah and, that kind of and plays, those are going to be the coasts i mean like for the most part um, yet the average speed ranked 12th. It's like 14.2. Now, number one, kind of surprising to people who aren't in IT. Cause I mean, if you're in IT, you kind of hear this, but yeah. South Korea, South Korea has an amazing internet. Yeah. Um, they, number one in, um, penetration with 81, 81% of their population gets 10 bits or more. Yeah. I, I mean, like, again, we're both in IT, so I'm not, I'm not surprised I mean, they're high end manufacturing, a lot of tech jobs in yes. South Korea. Yeah. And uh, so, but still, I think there's like 40, 40 ish million people in South Korea. And it, in, it's half of a pretty large peninsula. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not a small place. Nope. I mean, now it's very, very densely populated in Seoul, right? Like so the It is, the and most of our people live in the urban areas. Live in Seoul. But, but if you so. want to look at it, like it's parallel to here. The numbers aren't that different on how many people live near the urban area. Yeah, like if you really wanted to compare, you probably would compare like the greater New York area would probably be a pretty good if you counted New York, New Jersey and most of the Philly suburbs, that would probably be a pretty comparable space. Right. Getting back. Um, so when I say that, then they're like, well, yeah, how much are they paying for, you know, this awesome internet? And I'm like, well, not, not much. They actually pay 31 cents a MIP. Yeah. On average, 31 cents a MIP. Which, 30 bucks, yeah. 100 MIPs. Uh, it's pretty standard over there. Yeah. I mean, here... That's not happening. Yeah, that's darn fast. As a matter of fact, the average, while the, like we're kind of lucky in in our yeah. area because uh, we actually have two providers, so there is a bit of competition, a bit compared relative to the yeah, rest yeah, of the yeah, country because yeah. the average is for uh, at any least, competition is better than no competition. Yeah, FCC did a, a like a, a survey on this, and this is from 2014, and I think it's gotten a little bit better because we've had like Google Fiber and stuff like that come in and throw competition in some areas. But uh, four dollars and eighteen cents a MIP, 
is the go- oh. was the going rate in 2014. I don't think it's much better now. That is it's probably brutal. a little better. Yeah, it's it's awful. I mean, and if you look at other countries like Canada, Canada's they're they're very much like us. Yeah. I mean, they're but but that's still two dollars and seventy seven cents a mip. It's cheaper. Well, Japan, I think, I think it's most of Canada's population, which is about thirty million people, is within a hundred miles of the border. Yeah, that's a three day march, so we better be yeah be careful. Yeah, I, I I probably should not not poke poker good Canadian neighbors. No, I love Canada. I do. That's, I'm, just, I'm just saying that so they don't come and get us. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long march down to Baltimore. But. That's true. That's true. But anyway, um, so the UK seventy seventy six cents a MIP, Japan dollar eighty eight a MIP. We're pretty much for industrialized nations. We are really on the tail end of this thing when it comes to cost and and access. Yeah. Um, and kind of. Like, we all know why. It's because the givers of the internet are few and huge. I mean, yeah. is really what it comes and down so it, to. So, like, how in, – and in, this is a softball because I kind of know the answer, right? But how did we get here, right? Like, it's really the question. And I think all the listeners probably have a good sense of, you know – not maybe how we got to it, but at least, you know, the yeah, situation we all we're intuitively in. intuitively know that at least a big chunk of this is, uh, you know, Big Brother Cable. And uh, I believe Comcast uh, is the internet service provider for about 50% of the market in the United States. It's roughly. Like I, can, I can give you. Hold on. Let me get that stat. I'll pull it up real quick. While you're doing that, and then, you know, obviously, a lot of the rest is the husk of what used to be uh, Bell, you know, Ma Bell, because um, you got Verizon and AT&T, and then there's Charter. And, and once you've counted those four, that's the vast majority of the market in the they United States. They got about States. 30. Well, that's the, th- I, th- I think I know where you, where you got that. Time Warner and Comcast together. Uh, have almost half the market. Okay. Um, Comcast. Okay, basically, total broadband. Like I'm looking at this report from Lechman Research. Keep in mind the definition of broadband is 25 MIPS. Now I think the FCC set it up to 25 MIPS. So with out of 91 million subscribers at that speed, uh, Comcast has almost 24 million. So about 30 ish. 30 th- yeah, it's about 28%. Yeah. Yeah, around 28%. So then you got Time Warner at 13. And it's it's what's scary is it's it's, it's getting cuz it's going to get worse because I'm looking here at the subscriber numbers from the first quarter of this year. And cable added a million subscribers. Yeah. The phone companies like your Verizon, your AT&T, AT&T, CenturyLink, they added 10,000. And this is yeah, because, okay, if you look at it, the gains for first quarter, I mean, it's just quarter-to-quarter gains. Um, Comcast gained half a million. Time Warner gained, uh, well, uh, Comcast gained 438000 so almost half a million. Uh, Time Warner, 327000 uh Charter, 155000 AT&T lost 14000 Verizon lost 10000 And I think why this is happening is Verizon and AT&T are abandoning their DSL networks. Right. So what's happening is those folks are They're going cutting over, yeah. cutting over to this cable broadband, and it's just going to continue, and I think get worse, yeah, unless something happens. Well, in, in honestly, the only thing I see happening in the short run is more and more market share getting gobbled up by the big cable side. Um, I mean, one, it, it just in the in the consumer's mind, a lot of the time it seems that the the content that is provided by the cable companies is coupled with this, or bundled is probably a better term, with the just getting to the internet. Right. Right? Like, so I want to get HBO. I also want to get internet access. I don't want to have two bills that I have to pay. Yeah, I'll I pay mean, a little more, and that's that's fairly standard for people to yeah, what they, they I expect. Mean, I've here. done that. I you mean, know? I get that. That's that's yeah, and that's I think, not unreasonable. And I'm going to get into this a bit later. I wanted to 
get into like uh, why why South Korea? What got them? Yeah, you know to to Please. and and it comes down to in ninety five in nineteen ninety five they were looking and one inter- they had one internet user for every hundred citizens in nineteen and now they're like the biggest out there and what do they do? They did a moonshot. Remember, like, 62, Kennedy? Yeah. It's like, yeah, of course. I promise we're going to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Hard. You know, ah. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> if we had any <laughs> listeners in Massachusetts. I apologize. They, they seriously just unsubscribe. Dude, Southie will I, kick my, they call, they'll I, come down here. I am so Dude, sorry. Dude, Southie is rough. I am so sorry, Boston and all of Massachusetts, all of New England. Yeah. I apologize. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> maybe I will cut a little bit of the ah uh, out of the end of the last Just one. Just the last bit. Maybe a bit. So so they went and they said, we are going to put together an internet countrywide in 1995. Yeah. And they just started. It was very similar, actually, to our electrification project. Yep. You know, in, in uh, what was that, FDR, I think. But uh, I think it's FDR. But... Um, in that it was meant to touch all parts of the country, which is really hard. It's that last bit, right? It's getting those 40 people that live in right. nowhere, South Dakota. Yeah, well, that's, that's where, really that's where it's ass. expensive. Yeah. So, but they, they said they, they put, they, you know, they, they, they have a culture there in, in 95, probably a little bit today where they actually, you know, trust their government. But when the government screws up, they let them know about it. Like right. they also protest a lot. Yeah. But so they they have a good balance there. Like uh, where the government, when they say they're going to do stuff, they actually kind of do it. Yeah. So uh, I mean, who, who so, would think? Right. So so they go ahead and they and they lay it down. They start laying down, you know, pipe. Uh, at the time, DSL was the big thing in '95. So yeah. that's what that's what they were laying down. Um, by 2000, they connected. Ha- almost half of their God, population in five massive. years. Five years. 20 million people they massive connected in five initiative. years. Right. So, you know, that that's huge. I mean, and it's a country the size of, like, roughly, I mean, in population, a little bit less than France. I mean, they're, yeah. it's, 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 I mean, it's pretty it's large. big. I mean, 40 million people is no joke. Right. Um. So so they go ahead and, and, and they're putting down, you know, this, this public sector network. And I know, you know, people here aren't a fan. You know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to you know get a public works going these days yeah but i mean like if you look i i i get it i'm not a big like advocate for the federal government you know doing a lot of initiatives on its own right because it, it just in general it's kind of uh, you know a sledgehammer to do a tack hammer job i don't disagree but you know they did bring us the highways, right? Like there, it's not like it's not like the federal government hasn't done things well at some points, right? Like right. it's just so. It's kind know, of a meme to say that they're bad at everything. Yeah, it's, it's just a, <laughs> it, so in professional wrestling they have this term called cheap heat. Yes, which is, uh, and again, you know, it's because we're in Baltimore, right? Like we're we we like our wrestling. There's a lot of wrestling fans. Wrestling, they love the wrestling. Um, so like it, cheap heat is basically like when you when someone comes out and goes, oh, they've got the best fans here in Cleveland, and everyone cheers, right. or oh, they've got the ugliest fans here in Cleveland, right? It's kind of and how- everyone boos, right? It's just the it's the thing that you know. So it's easy to say the government sucks, right? It's right? Like, like it's it's like when Steve Perry would 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 change the you know line of that uh, born and raised in South Detroit, yeah. <laughs> right? He would change it to the city he's in, South Miami, <laughs> right? Right. right. Yeah. I like Baltimore. Works really. Yeah, Bal- sure. Baltimore. Oh, anyway, well, anyway, yeah. So exactly, the crowd goes crazy, yeah. and that's kind of that's the antithesis of that so is he- to say the government is they can't build anything, you know. So. Right. And that's kind of what happens here. There, it's different. They, you know, they 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 grab the shovels and hammers and they and they got to work, and they and they got it done. And 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 the part about this, what I was kind of leading into, is they decided that once there was enough private sector competition, they deregulated that area. 
and just kind of yeah. ceded it to the company. And that, to me, like when we were talking about this, Dennis and I, I, I said that's really the part they did well because we in 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 this country have done. I mean, uh, there there are quite a few different initiatives where we've done this, but it took us forever. For example, to like deregulate toll roads and and things like that and we're right. still doing it in certain areas and, and so you you look at it and you're like hey like yeah the government comes in does the big capital outlay up front to kind of get things rolling and then steps out of the way that's a pretty good model for something oh like it's great this. i think that's the problem we have here and why people are kind of because we, we get into these situations here where i mean the FCC kind of put us originally put us in this situation a bit with the way they defined, you know, um, cable. They made the laws to actually, you know, around the technology itself, right? And kind of gave the cable companies kind of this sweetheart deal where pretty much they're the only ones that are allowed to provide content over these wires yeah. for the longest time. Um, so they they so people are kind of gun shy. When the FCC is actually trying to do some good things right yeah. now to try to fix some of these problems, but people are like, "Ah, oh, you guys got us into this mess." So we're kind of a, and and the companies, the cable companies, are kind of playing on those fears. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, it's a nasty arrangement. right? It now. really is because the people we don't we a lot of people don't trust you know the FCC because they've gotten us here and 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 who are you going to trust the cable companies? You the, the the public is kind of left out in the cold. Yeah. So as I said, South Korea doesn't have a lot of these problems <laughs> so in 2005 these you know all these tele these these companies um they they started getting pressured by these smaller startups who were just going in because i mean like i said dsl was the was the right. uh, was the lead technology so they started these these small startups started putting in like and buying up pieces of this deregulated dsl line so the you know that a lot of companies got together and they started lying fiber yeah. So then it just started like this competitive rise just took fire. Yeah. And and now they have this, you know, one of the best internet access in the world, hands down. And and like what's crazy about that is we could very similarly, like we have a a capital market in this country that is by far the deepest in the, in the world, right? Like so it, it would – it is certainly not unprecedented for us to see um, industries like that sprout of, out of nowhere, right? But the problem right now is the consumers are tied up with these, you know, long-term contracts because, again, you know, monopolists like the, the cable companies and the, the large – telecoms they need to get a return on this heavy investment they've made so they not only charge a pretty penny but lock you in for the longest term they can so it's it's a pretty rough thing to tear yourself away from them i mean i i did it with comcast and i did out of spite i did i did it just I spent. Four, oh, I will not give them my money either. Oh well, no, I did for a long time, and I spent. Four, well, I, I used to be a customer. Four hours on the phone with someone, and I, I, I think I said a lot of words that I didn't <laughs> know at the time. Like I was just making up curse words. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've because you ran out. You used yeah, up all the ones I, you I knew. Mean, just everything you could think of, and I know a handful, right? Uh, and and like. It just kept going on, and I'd be put on hold, and and so on. So finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to Verizon, and I'd I'd rather make that deal with the de- uh, devil than the other. Right. I mean, I I have them too. Their support's good. Their people seem to know what they're talking about. Um, you know, when I call, they don't run me through. I mean, I've called Comcast support. It's a nightmare. Have so. Have I mentioned this on the podcast oh. uh, that? Uh, Consumerist. Uh, it's a good blog if anybody ever gets yeah, read, a chance. Red Consumerist. Um, it's good stuff. Used to do this. I think they stopped it in 2014, but they, but it was great. I loved this. They did this thing that was basically like a uh, March Madness. So, like for those uh, you know few international listeners we have, that's that's basically our our collegiate basketball 
uh, championship where it starts with 64 teams and cuts down to 32 right. and so on, right? 16, etc. Um, and they did this with uh, having people weigh in on who they thought the worst company in America was oh. just in general, yeah. And they had X number of criteria. I read this; it was rank. it was great. Oh, it was fantastic. And the, the again, if you're international, you might not get this, but the Duke of uh, their final uh, or of their March Madness, right? Like always in the Final Four was Comcast, right? I mean, like, it, and and it was like as reliable as clockwork. Verizon was pretty good. They were more like Gonzaga, right? Yeah. Like well, they, have, they were in the Elite Eight all like, the time. I, there's a great site. I've mentioned it before in like one of the news updates, DSL Reports. It's yeah. pretty much you, you can go there and, and people just – it's kind of like an open forum. You kind of weigh in and you can vote and you know rate your ISP. Verizon actually does okay. Yeah. It, c- pretty good compared to you know a lot of the cable not companies. They're cheap, but no. they're not bad. No. Like, I, I used to have outages – with Comcast, pretty frequently, never had one knocking on wood. Right. With Verizon, I had one. I had one, and it was on Thanksgiving, and it was late. And I came like um, we all went to uh, my in laws, and I had to come home early to write a blog, a blog piece. And so I get home, and the internet's down, and I need to write. You know, I need to get this blog piece pu- uh, published. Happy Dennis. Yeah, that's what that is. So I called them, and it's Thanksgiving, and. Their support wasn't open, which was unfortunate. But then I tweeted them. I got on Twitter. I tweeted them. Yeah. I got a tweet right back. They asked me, you know, they, they did it over, you know, direct message. And I gave them some information. They reset the thing. And I was running within 20 minutes. Yeah. Over Twitter. And now I just tweet, now I just tweet them. Because it's great. Because, yeah. you know... I, I don't need to sit on hold. I can do whatever I, I'm doing, yeah. tweet, and just wait for my phone and to I've vibrate. I've actually heard the same thing. So for anyone that still does have Comcast, I've actually heard that Comcast is more responsive over Twitter. Oh, are they? Than it, yeah, I have heard that. Uh, okay. And, and again, they're looking for people that are like, you know, clearly... I'm going to go stand in the town crier spot. Uh, and ring the bell. And just right. ring the bell <laughs> right. until you come fix my <laughs> hear stuff. Hear ye, hear ye. Hear Comcast ye. sucks. I hate Comcast. <laughs> Let me tell you all about it. Right. So, um, yeah, so I was looking at some other countries that are kind of up there, industrial nations um, in, in internet. And, you know, they are, like like, it comes down to how economically free the country yeah. is because six of the top 10 are, they rate in the top 20 for that. And uh, nine out of the top 10 are in the top 31. The outlier who has great internet, by the way, Latvia. Really? Yes. Latvia has amazing internet. I think it's Dr. Well, Latvia, I think it's Dr. Doom. Oh wait, no wait. That's, <laughs> that La- is, that's Latveria. Yeah. yeah that sorry, is sorry, not sorry. a real country. No, that's not. No. That's not a real country. <laughs> Latvia in fact is a real country. It is just not a very large country, but um, yeah, that other one is not Latveria. a real place. Yeah. Well, Doctor Doom could put up some sick internet, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, so you know he'd have the Doom bots working night and day. Sorry, yeah. I'm a comic nerd. I apologize, everyone. So anyway, so so what can we what can we do about this? Well, uh, so there's a couple of things, right? Like uh, one thing we haven't talked about very much is um so we've we've ranked on the on the cable provider or I'm sorry on the ISPs themselves right but uh part of this equation is actually the municipalities right the and the utilities as well because uh, the municipalities have I forget what they call it but it's basically like a running your line fee Right. right for when they're actually putting the infrastructure in place and utilities have it for it it's called a pole fee and it's basically if something needs to go above ground they charge you for that right and so that automatically increases the costs passed on to the internet service provider which ripples down and goes to the consumer so um the thing about that that 
I think people can do is, one, push on your local councilmen, push on your local representatives, at least within the United States, to try and advocate for uh, less of those um, intrusive and, you know, cost-raising uh, fees associated with with internet service uh, providers. The other thing I would say is that a lot of these municipalities negotiate very long terms. Oh, yeah. Right? Like Baltimore had... I, I'm not... I can't... I'm not going to say the exact number, but it was above five. It was like years they they had. It might have been yeah. ten. I mean, it's, that's it was how to recompete. No, it was Comcast was the only game in town for the longest time because they made a ten. I think it was a, it was a ridiculously long deal for technology. When and you figure you, something that like you really dug in after five years, right? It's really hard to unseat somebody. I mean, it's not undoable. Oh, right? and it and does the, happen, and but this gets into the kind hard. of the shadiness that they do because we're in Baltimore County, and I mean Maryland's kind of weird because usually the city is rolled into the county. It's not that but way not here. In Baltimore, Baltimore right? is its own separate entity, so they, Baltimore County wasn't part of that deal. But their Comcast, based on your address, yeah, you'll get a completely different rate from them. Like yeah. if you like, like neighbors will get completely different rates if you're across that city line. Oh yeah, and it's 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 insane. And they do this stuff all the time. Like, um, okay, Google Google Fiber, big fan of Google Fiber. They're, I mean, currently they're putting a roll out. They're they're giving gigabit internet for seventy bucks a month. God, that's awesome. It's amazing. And not only that, but you can get a hundred MIPS for fifty bucks a month. And they actually have a deal, which is perfect for cord cutters. Um, if you're in one of the areas they're in, it's it's 25 mips for 15 bucks a month. 15 bucks a month. That's dirt cheap. And if you pay like a installation fee, free five mips for life. Like if you just pay for them to come and install yeah, it. You you guys can't see me shaking my head, but I'm just that. And and not to get like super on the bandwagon, but that really is pretty darn cheap. It's amazing, at least compared and, to anything we are paying here in the U.S. And I want to—I mean, just to pull, to take it back, like the reason why I brought them up is in Chicago, um, they—it was Google Fiber just went into Chicago, yeah. and as soon as Google Fiber goes somewhere, Comcast immediately. Cuts amazingly ha- can like give the speeds that people have been craving. Yeah, yeah, like out of nowhere. Like yeah, and, and for thing, cheap prices too. It's up and down, right? Like that's the other thing. Right, right. So, so they get in there, and Sh- Chicago other Comcast immediately like the, you know publishes. They, I don't think the twenty five MIPS. They weren't getting down that low, but they were giving the high speed at seventy. Sure. Unless, of course, you're in an area of Chicago that can't get Google Fiber. There was an there was an article on uh, Ars Technica, Ars Technica, and um, I'll put it out in the show notes. But th- basically, this uh, this gentleman is trying to call and get this deal, and they're giving him the runaround. And he eventually, you know, after hours on the phone, gets gets to somebody who's like, "Oh no, we can't, we can't get you that deal." And 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 then Ars Technica, Ars Technica like uh, investigated a bit, and and it came, comes down to the point that since he couldn't get Google Fiber, right, he can't get the. Seventy dollars. He had to pay one hundred forty bucks a month for the mm-hmm. for the internet as opposed to the seventy. Yeah, and this is this is what's tricky, right? Like, and I, I'm not sure of the legality of. The, I mean, like, my wife is an antitrust attorney. I'm not, so right. I left my law degree at home. Oh wait, we're in my basement. <laughs> never mind. Uh, the The thing that's tricky about all this is a lot of these things seem like they could be brought to. So with antitrust law in general, it, it goes through the FTC right. or the Department of Justice. And Federal Trade Commission. Yeah, I'm sorry. Acronym unfriendly here. Yes. We should be saying those out. Um, but uh, because these deals are made with other governmental entities, I think people tend to not bring these cases forward that right. often. Right, like, because if a, if another like it's a, it becomes a state's rights issue almost immediately, I would think. So you know, is Google Fiber a silver bullet? It, it seems like the answer is no, right? Well, like, it's not. 
It's not because of the well, they're hitting some issues with the rollout because it's expensive to lay fiber. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I mean is that like, well, you finish your thought. Well, well, first let's give people an idea where they are. They're like, they're right now they're in Atlanta, they're in Georgia, Austin, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina, the Kansas City metro area, um, and Nashville, uh, Provo, Utah, and I think they also started rolling out in Salt Lake recently. They're realizing they're not. I mean. I reported about, uh, you know, a few weeks back that, you know, they're switching the the mode from, lay, yeah, they want to get away from delivery. Right. They want to get away from fiber and I go more wireless um, because they have, um, there's a. It's mi- considerably cheaper. You don't have to dig. Right. I'm and <laughs> there's big things happening right Let's now. Let's make it simple. It's a physics question. Exactly. I don't have to move a whole lot of dirt. Right. So like, right? if I can, can I throw this? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like in oh. football. You know, it's, yeah. you can, it's, it's much easier to pass the ball 40 yards down the field yeah. <laughs> than it is to hand off to the running back right. and hope and he gets to the hole. push other human beings <laughs> out right. of the way. So, so basically, the, they're trying... Um, they're, they're trying this – they actually just bought a company that specializes in wireless technology. Um, I think that. Right. Yeah. And I think that was last year. And there's they're, – they're researching a millimeter wave yep. as well, which is – like uh, I know Starry Internet in Boston is actually playing around with this too. And uh, it can deliver gigabit over Wi-Fi. The problem with it is it's, it's point to point. So yeah. you need to get – they need to talk to people in high buildings who own high buildings and put, and it's not huge. It's maybe the size of like a trash can, but it has to put like an emitter there and right. weather can affect your signal a bit. So, you know, you're not going to be getting gig speeds and heavy rain. Well, you're also talking, this is early in the technology. Exactly. But that's what they're, that's what Google's looking at right now. And they're looking at kind of getting away from fiber and, you know, going over to, to more wireless technology. And, and this really gets to the idea of, of leapfrogging, right? Like, so like one of the ways um, markets switch when they get stuck, in something like this where you're just not seeing a ton of innovation around either price reduction or you know in this case increased speed is you get some sort of leap leapfrog and innovation you saw this a lot in countries that didn't have a legacy uh landline uh, infrastructure with telecom where they were just putting in wireless cell phone you know, communication, you know, they went and all of a sudden everybody had a, had a phone and it was really, really fast for them to do. Whereas in the United States, because we were laying landlines, cause we started it in the fifties, right. Right. Or forties. It, it took a long, long time to get full exposure for phones. Right. So they, um, they, the problem that they're having though, is they're not getting the signups that they expected. Right. I mean, with, with Google Fiber. I mean, that's... And I, I'm going to pin a little bit of that on them. Right. Because they're really missing some opportunity here. Because um, their TV package isn't up to speed. with Because you, you can get a TV package through sure. Google Fiber. And it's not up to speed with what cable is providing. That's the issue. Is people are expecting... like. You know, unless you're a cord cutter and you're getting on, you know, you're seeking out my blog or you're seeking or, out other blogs out there. you're one of these people that never actually gets cable, right? Like right. Like one of those. Well, that's fine. I mean, those people will probably be happy just have an internet connection. And I'm talking more of the millennial, you know, yeah, yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Exactly. They're, they're, that's Google's customer right now. But, I mean, if you're over the age of... Then you don't want... Like, you might... You were expecting TV to come yeah. with it. Force of habit. Right. So, um, I mean, I think the demographics break, the, the, the demographic breaks down to around, you know, under 40, you know, you're looking at cord cutting, generally speaking, yeah. over 40, maybe not so much. And you're expecting television to be delivered with your internet service. Now, I think Google could overcome this. Sure. Because all they need to do is partner with, say, you know, TiVo. Sling, whatever. Roku. And say, hey, we're going to, you know, come to this area. We're going to 
like market the heck out of this thing as you get 15 MIPS. I mean, you get 25 MIPS for 15 bucks. That's enough to like stream some video. You know, you get a discounted TiVo device. Yeah. And then you'll have an industry prop out of this because you could have consultants. You have people doing consulting, like startups saying, hey, you know, I will, you pay me this fee. I'll come in. You tell me what you want to watch. I'll get the services for you. And, you know, we'll take this 15, you know, dollar a month, yeah. 25 MIPS and work with it. Because, I mean. Frankly, please do that in Baltimore. Because Dennis and I will go start a little consulting company. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but, I mean, you'll, you'll, they'll be able to, uh, like, companies would prop out a, uh, the woodwork yeah, probably to course. do this. Because all they really need to do is go in and share their expertise to get somebody hooked up with this. You could probably have sites would come out of nowhere to manage this stuff where you would just go on a website and say, I want to watch these shows. And then they could spit out, okay, here you need Google fiber and these services and you're good to go. Honestly, like a lot of this is, is probably who knows if it's in the works, but it's not rocket science, right? Like, they they know that if they partner with someone, all of a sudden they get a force multiplier. Right. It's just they aren't doing it yet. And I, I, why I don't know that confuses. I'm I'm kind of confused on that myself. And I mean I've I've gone round and round in my head about this, and I really just think that they are trying to kind of force Cable's hand, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Google has deep pockets, so they can lose. They can pull an old Microsoft and do what they, what Microsoft did with the Xbox, and just lose money for a long right. time. Yeah, I'm just, I'm wondering how serious they really are about this because I don't. It, it, it doesn't feel like the normal Google push that you would see with something like this. I mean, who knows? It, 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 you know, trying to guess what, you know, Alphabet. Yeah, that's true. Good. I say Google, but they are Alphabet now because well, I don't know what their I don't know what their Google Fiber wing is. It's probably just Google Fiber under the Alphabet parent I company. Don't know. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, uh, Google is just their web search it's engine a subdivision underneath the entity that is now called Alphabet. Right. It's no one bought them. They just changed their. They made up themselves a parent company, and then they have different divisions within it. Google yep. Fiber being one, Google Search being another. And there's um, a whole bunch. They Google bought Labs. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it, it, what what it is that they believe they're in game to be, I, I don't know. But so getting back to the, the point of this part of the discussion is really, like, what will break things loose? It, it, honestly, what we bet on here in general in the United States is that a technology innovation will break loose the market. And is that this particular one that Google Fiber is looking into? Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, like I was saying to you earlier, it could, you know, the as fast as things are moving, it could be anything. It could, you know, whatever. Sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. Like it could literally be anything and and trying to guess that is is pretty darn difficult uh yeah because i mean you know you got your millimeter wave you got kugel you got uh you have municipal internet in various cities and municipalities across the country um hopefully you know one of those areas can you know sprout some kind of technological innovation where the you know the barriers of entry come down and there's just more competition in the market and more chance for startups to yeah. uh to, to kind of you know blossom and and well, come out. even even for existing entities to reinvent themselves right like because there's that's true there's tons of reason to think that the at least some of the more innovative existing players verizon would be one i think you could point to could just reimagine its offering right like i think that's what they're trying to do with shifting things towards their fiber offering right well i mean dish dish kind of like dish network kind of sees that coming and they put sling out there unfortunately though they don't have an internet offering no um so i mean think that you need something you need a company like that that's going to sit back and say 
the world's changing. And and I agree, Verizon's got opportunity here because yeah. Verizon's like Comcast and 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 Time Warner are eating their lunch right now yeah. because they used to be, you know, a telecommunic they were yeah. they're a telecommunications company. Yeah. They're supposed to the the internet should be their gig. So come on, Verizon. <laughs> Yeah, but so, I mean, just in general, competition you know tends to drive down prices and and leads to you know more innovation. You know what I wanted to get into today that we really didn't get a chance to mention. What's that? Municipal internet. Oh yeah, like it, that's a pretty large topic too. So uh, we could probably go pretty deep on that. Yeah, I mean, it it really is you know something that could really help out the state of internet in in the US and 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 you're right there's a lot of depth to it so uh we might save that for a future episode write that down municipal internet Man. so we can dive a lot deeper into that in future episodes yeah i mean we definitely should um but you know as for today we got to wind this thing down so we were talking about you know last time that we're going to end every show with like a movie quote like the last line of a movie yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, today I'm going with Roadhouse, my favorite Swayze film. A polar bear fell on me. <laughs> that was <laughs> tiny, right? That's uh, awesome. Oh, someone please write in and tell us how to close a podcast. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. If you're enjoying the show, um, do me a big favor right now. And if you're on your iPhone, go ahead and take a look at it and subscribe to this podcast because what that will do is it will raise our rankings on the list and it'll get more visibility for the show which means more people will listen and um it'll ensure that we'll keep making episodes for a long time to come so um if you could do that and if you're enjoying the show of course i don't want you to you hate the show then please I'm not going to force you to subscribe or twist your arm or anything. Um, but if you do like the show, that's like one thing that could really, really, really help us out. And I would be super appreciative and uh, indebted to you uh, forever. If you want to interact with the show, uh, we do now have an email address that you can email. And that is podcast at groundedreason.com. That's podcast, singular, podcast at groundedreason.com. Um, as always, you can tweet us at Grounded Reason, or you could go to the Facebook page, which is really easy to find. Just search Grounded Reason; comes right up. Um, and you could, you know, or you could go to the website groundedreason.com, click on podcasts, find this episode, and leave your comment there. Oh, and I wanted to mention: if you do subscribe, I am doing weekly news updates for news regarding cord cutting. For instance, if you have a streaming service that gains a channel, um, I'll hop on and I will talk about it midweek, and it'll be same day and if you subscribe then that will go into your podcast app and then you will know about it right away so it's kind of like a new service not quite live but almost so subscribing is your way so you're never late to the party if uh say your favorite show comes on a streaming service subscribing to the podcast is your way of knowing when that will happen okay well i'll see everybody next time have fun out there